buddy Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific 3 Eastern, Sunday 3 Pacific 6 Eastern. Well, it's Tuesday here on this program, and you know what that means? We have so much to talk about here today, not the least of which is last night's Monday Night Raw. We have a little over, well, we got two weeks until the Hell in a Cell show. And we got matches for Hell in a Cell. So we can tell you about that, the Raw show last night and more. We've also got NXT 2.0 tonight. Tomorrow is AEW Dynamite. Uh, tomorrow's the Go Home Dynamite for the Double or Nothing show, which is coming up this weekend. Obviously, there's a Rampage on Friday. And uh, if you are one of those folks going to Las Vegas for Double or Nothing weekend, well... Be at the building at uh, about 2 o'clock on uh, Friday because the show's going to start at 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern. And uh, that looks to be the plan. But uh, they're going to they're gonna go at that point one way or the other. I suppose they can go live to tape or whatever. But 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern is when the show's going to start on Friday. We'll give you the lineup for all of these shows. There's a lot coming up. So we'll talk about that here today on the show. Thankfully, we got uh, nothing regarding uh, Sasha and Naomi. So that's your update for the day. We got ratings to talk about here. Of course, our uh, weekly Raw report and uh, plenty more. If you'd like to contact us here today, 425-780-7566. That is the text message line. 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com is the email address, at Brian Alvarez on Twitter. And the update on Lance Storm is he is feeling almost back to normal after his battle with COVID, which means at 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern today, we will be doing our Figure 4 Daily with Lance Storm only for subscribers, WrestlingObserver.com or Video.F4WOnline.com. Lance returns in a couple of hours. Mike Sempervivi is here after the break. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Well, we got a lot of big shows coming up, everybody. Our favorite show, NXT 2.0, takes place tonight. Dynamite takes place on on Wednesday, Rampage on Friday. We actually have matches for next week's Raw already. But here's what we got coming up, everyone. Tonight on NXT 2.0, Braun Breaker is going to be facing Duke Hudson, who's 6'5". In a non-title match. Mandy Rose will be facing Indy Hartwell in a non-title match. Pretty Deadly will be facing Roderick Strong and Damon Kemp in a non-title match. These titles are very prestigious. Edris Anofe and Malika Blade versus Stax and Two Dimes. Which, by the way, I was alerted yesterday that Two Dimes is also, uh, I guess, a term for uh, like a life sentence in prison. Two Dimes, 20 years. It's not a life sentence. Well, life sentence is normally 20 years. That's why you can get consecutive life sentences. What? What are you talking about? A life Where have you like... been, brah? I thought... <laughs> it depends on if you Anyway, can this guy ain't even 20, so I'm not sure how he even got two dimes. <laughs> unless he committed some horrible crime when he was zero. <laughs> Maybe it's because he's 20. That's why you had 10 plus 10. Two, 20 years old. Two dimes. What's happening? Elbow Fire and Electra Lopez. <clears throat> and uh, Wesley versus Sanga. He was born in prison, this guy says. <laughs> oh, man. What? How long uh-huh. is a life sentence? It's like it's 80 years or 60 years or something. Life sentence is any type of imprisonment where a defendant is required to remain in prison for all of their natural life or until parole. So how long is a life sentence? Well, in most of the United States, a life sentence means a person in prison for 15 years with the chance of parole. So there you go. Soft parole boards, I guess, letting people out early. Like raising Arizona or something like that. But there are uh, uh, multiple types of uh, life imprisonment. There's... uh, 15 years to life, 25 years to life, life with mercy, indeterminate life sentences, life without the possibility of parole, life without mercy, et cetera, et cetera. But the point is... Life without mercy. Yeah, can you imagine that? Damn. I should have had Fauntleroy read those. 
25 to life, though, that's the one that sounds most familiar. So we really don't know what uh, what two dimes, what his name is all about. I think he's got 20 cents to his name. But other <laughs> the people have suggested other things. And, oh, I mean, we don't really know what stacks means either. When he gets cut in three months, I guess we'll, we'll find that out. I mean, maybe he's really into paper, this stacks. <laughs> maybe he works at a print shop. I don't know. We don't know anything about these two guys. Maybe he likes playing Django. Dynamite on Wednesday. We have FTR versus Rapongi Vice for the Ring of Honor World Tag Team title. So they got titles on the line on this show, brother. We got uh, Samoa Joe, Kyle O'Reilly, men's tournament semifinal. Britt Baker, Tony Storm, women's tournament semifinal. Wardlow, Sean Spears with MJF as the referee. Jungle Boy, Swerve Strickland, and Ricky Starks in a three way. CM Punk and Hangman Page will have a confrontation. And just added, Thunder Rosa will be interviewed by Tony Schiavone. Oh, no. That never works out well. It's becoming a parody now with this this whole deal with her. And it's this has not been the title reign that I would have expected that Thunder Rosa would have. Just like try to turn this one around. I don't know if an interview segment with Tony Schiavone is going to do it. Because, you know, Nyla Rose, that one didn't work out too well. And, yeah, these things just don't work out well. And, of course, uh, Raw next week. Uh, if you do not see Raw, we'll do the Raw report after the break. But it was originally going to be Asuka versus Bianca Belair at Hell in a Cell because Asuka had beaten Becky Lynch last week. But uh, Becky got put into another match this week where if she won, she would be added to the match. So she won. Now it's a three-way. So next week on the Go Home Raw, you get to see the match that was originally the championship match at uh, Hell in a Cell. It will be Asuka versus Bianca Belair, non-title next week. And the return to action of Lacey Evans. We're going to find out one way or the other. I shouldn't say that. I expect to find out next week if she's a babyface or if they're actually going heel with Lacey Evans. Because it was, and you know how these things go, the plan was that she would be a heel. Once everybody heard that, they just were, like, aghast. So it's possible that they're going to go babyface with her. But I guess we'll find out on Monday. Listen, I have no problem long-term with going heel with Lacey. I mean, at some point, you can make some sort of change. But to do all of that, because you know what? You can only do it once. It's like the Cameron Grimes deal. I mean, if that guy would have lost, how many times can he go back to the same story about how he promised his father he would win a title in NXT? I mean, you could, but I mean... the Tough sell. <laughs> jump, tough. it was strike when the iron is hot. Have her work as a babyface, see how over she can get as a babyface, and then eventually, fine, turn her heel. But you can never do this six weeks of vignettes again to get her over as a heroic baby face. So don't mess this up, you idiots. That's my advice, mm. which nobody ever takes. WWE returning to Saudi Arabia in November. Maybe Lacey Evans can work on that show. November 5th. So it'll be just a few weeks uh, before the Survivor Series. And, uh, yeah, this is how they make their money. $60 million a show, approximately. Every time they do a show in Saudi Arabia. So if you're wondering why, well, stacks and two dimes, baby. That's why. So they're going to go there on November 5th, make their money, and that's the story. Christmas money. I can keep going if you want, Mike. Well, what do you want me to add to that? Nothing. <laughs> Smackdown. Exactly. 2.031 million viewers, up 11%. Largest audience for the show since April 15, 0.45. And 18 to 49, so that's a pretty good number there. Rampage aired at 7 Eastern, 4 on the West Coast, 410,000 viewers, up 20%. Why am I so itchy? <laughs> what are you, Billy Kidman all of a sudden now? What do you got, fleas over there? No, What's happening? It's called, it's called uh, pollen. I've been crying about this weather. A new fabric softener? How uh, we were eight days into May and we broke the record for rain. Eight days into the month that we'd already broken the record. And then by by day 15, we had double the rain we ever have in May. I was just ready to just, you know what I'm saying. And then uh, all of a sudden the sun came out the other day. And it was like, it was, I think it hit like 68 or 70. And it was like a heat wave. We lost power. 
Oh, and no. then, like, my allergies exploded. So, yeah, that's what's going on. So I apologize for all the itching. Is but anyway, anything just mold and mildew up there most of the year? No. We don't have mold or mildew. And we, all that rain? we clean our houses. We don't... What do you think's going on? We leave everything out in the rain? Uh, no, I'm we sure bring it inside. Your Does your help clean your house? <laughs> yeah, we actually hire people to clean this house. And if you saw this house, you'd, you'd probably hire more people than we do. <laughs> so anyway, uh, 410,000 viewers for Rampage, up 20.6%. 0.15 in 18 to 49, up 25%. Best rating since April 22nd, 13th for the day on cable. Pretty soon, this will all be over. They'll be back in their normal time slot. Then we can accurately judge them again. But uh, that's that's the update. And that's the news, everybody. Have you been watching the any of the New Japan Best of the Super Juniors? I've not watched one second of it. Oh, man. There's a lot going on, dude. Oh, yeah, well. Well, is it good? Are you just going to ask me the question and not answer? Did you watch well, a second yeah, of it? I, I... Uh, yes, I've seen almost every match so far. Oh, why'd you it's, tell it's, us how it's, it's it is then? Shows. It's been fantastic so far, but a lot of really good wrestling. And I can you see. You don't the, say. Yeah, can you believe that? But I can see it like literally, like three to three and a half star matches. There's been a couple of outliers that have been really good. That have, El Desperado has looked fantastic being over there. Ace Austin from TNA has really impressed me being over there. He's fit in perfectly. So, you know, I can see the G1 starting off with a lot more fire than this has but for a lot of guys this is their first time in japan that's their first time working for new japan and with some of the opponents they've been with but uh, you know guys like teton clark connors uh tjp all of those guys have stood out well you know maybe i'll maybe i'll watch some after nxt 2.0 tonight back in a moment observer live observer.com let's get this raw report out of the way then we'll take your feedback and maybe your calls in the next segment I mean, there was good stuff on the show. Yeah. Did you watch it? Man, Matt Riddle came out crying. I was crying. He was so sad to have lost that match and his friend Randy. Randy's been having a rough time the last couple of years. Back hurts. He's just in pain all the time. And he knew Randy didn't want to let him down, but he let Randy down. And Randy's not here tonight, and he looked in the camera and he says, Randy, I just want you to know, I love you. Fans are practically crying. This is a very heart-wrenching little segment right here. Then it led to a match, or led to a match, Riddle and the Street Profits versus Sammy and uh, the Usos. Because uh, this, I mean, they haven't officially said anything, but the brand extension is, it's essentially done. Uh, half of the Raw crew is going to be on SmackDown Friday. Cody's going to be there. I think Seth is going to be there. They're just doing whatever. And it makes for a better show, as we've mentioned a thousand times. So anyway, uh, ended up with the Usos walking out on Sami Zayn. So Sami Zayn's all by himself one on three. Riddle hits him with the RKO and pins him. And they talk about how Riddle has, has gotten his revenge. I was like, he has? Anyway, he won. So that was nice. Uh, we had the Bobby Lashley Almighty Challenge. And it was essentially Bobby Lashley coming out. And, and Lashley's not, like, a great promo. But uh, the thing is, like, he's a he's a legitimate bad dude. And so if the right guy, you know, starts, you know, saying the right things, he's actually pretty good. So he's challenged MVP to a match. And if the winner gets to choose the stipulations for Lashley versus Omos... At Hell in a Cell. So, uh, you know, MVP is like, uh, he doesn't really want to do the, the match. And so Lashley asks if he's scared. And so then MVP launched into this promo about, I'm not scared. I made you. I'm a former blah, blah, blah. And then Lashley, Lashley gets all riled up and he starts, I'm going to kick your ass tonight. It's actually turned into a pretty good promo segment. That was the entire first hour of the show, by the way. The whole first hour was those two segments. Then the Judgment Day comes out. And they stand in the ring for eight minutes while they do commercials and backstage interviews with Dana Brooke and and uh, this and that, Becky Lynch. Then they come back and they talk for another eight minutes. And so after about 16 minutes, it's finally time for a match. What did they talk about, you ask? You know what they talked about. It's because of the fans. It's the fans' fault. Eight minutes of it's because of you fans. And it's even funnier... Because they're supposed to be heels, and the fans are supposed to hate them. And the first thing that uh, 
that uh, Damien Priest says is, All rise! And, bro, you look in the background, and all the fans rise. <laughs> they rise. He says, All rise! And they're like, Oh, he told us to stand up! And they all stand up. And poor Damien Priest has to look around and go, I said all rise! Like they're not listening to him, even though they did. <laughs> these fans, these WWE fans are something else nowadays. So anyway, they had a match. It was Rhea and Damian Priest versus Liv Morgan and AJ Styles. I do like, by the way, that uh, my fav- one of my favorite wrestling names in the last decade was Punishment Martinez, which was the name of Damian Priest before they changed his name. So they can't call him that. But Edge repeatedly refers to him as the Punishment, which is awesome. So anyway, they had a good match. And uh, Edge, of course, interfered multiple times. And finally cost Liv Morgan the win, Ripley Pinder. And then the baby faces get beaten, and then they get beaten up. You know, heat. So they're all killed. We had a Miz promo. Oh, God help me. We had Jerry Lawler's Kinks Court with Veer Mahan. Veer Mahan is the biggest, scariest, most intimidating guy in storyline. So, you know, 70-something-year-old Jerry Lawler goes out there, he just tells a bunch of jokes and makes fun of the guy. And uh, they did do a, a quick promo with Veer. And then Lawler starts making more jokes. And now Veer's like, well, I, gotta, I guess i got to kill you now. And so the Mysterios run out, and they uh, clear the ring of Veer Mahan. So it looks like we're going to have multiple handicap matches at the pay-per-view. Because, you know, in WWE, it's like they have 40 writers, but they all have the same one idea. So, you know, that's what happens. Here are their one ideas. Uh, handicap matches. I think we're going to have two at the pay-per-view. Uh, the gimmick where you tease a count out and then the guy flies into the ring and then immediately gets pinned. We've seen that uh, three times in the last two weeks between Ron and SmackDown. We saw it again on this show. Alexa Bliss promo. Uh, Alexa Bliss is, I mean, my God, this was... <laughs> She's happy to be back. Let's just leave it at that. Then we had Alexa Bli- uh, beating Nikki Ash. We've seen this match. Uh, you know, we saw it last week. We're seeing it again. It was the same match. She won. Okay. Third hour. They did the, the countdown clock for Cody. Cody's going to be showing up 9.50 or whatever. So uh, they play his music. He comes down. Crowd's going crazy. He's going to get to the ring. They shut the lights off, and they just stand there for eight minutes because we got a commercial. Oscar video package. Oscar interview. Finally, The Miz does his entrance. And I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not, but... Uh, uh, Cody's first match back was with The Miz, and he beat him. Well, here we are. I got an idea. Let's just do it again. So they do the same match we've already seen. Nobody believes The Miz is beating Cody. Miz has his good days, and he has his days that aren't so good. This was one of those days. Boring match. Miz is underwater. Slow motion. And finally, Cody goes up top, and uh, and Seth Rollins comes down and shoves him off the top, and it's a DQ. Yeah. So uh, he beats up Cody, and then earlier, Cody had given his weight belt to some youngster, and so for heat, Seth goes and steals it back from the youngster, and he goes and he just gives. It's only one whack, but man, he whacked Cody. Whacks him with this belt and leaves, and then Cody's, he's limping, he's selling his leg, his back's all messed up. And he goes and he gives a belt back to the kid. What a baby face. My <laughs> God. So then, you know, talk about matches that we've seen before. Because, you know, I, uh, how many wrestlers do they have between two brands? God, I've seen the same matches over. I'm losing it now. I'm trying to reel myself in. Reel myself in. Let it go. Come on, let it no. go. It's cathartic. Do it. We see Ezekiel and Chad Gable again. This is the third match we're seeing again here in the last couple of weeks. Last week, it was at least good because Kevin Owens was on commentary. He was awesome. It was the best thing on the show. Well, this week, it's WWE, so it's like, well, no one was paying attention to the match because of Kevin Owens, so he can be there, but he can't talk. So he's at ringside, but they don't let him do commentary. These blokes, oh, four minutes, nothing happened in match. I was begging for them to put the headset on Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens, like, he's off screen. He's like, he's lying. He's a liar. 
and I like turning up the volume so I could only hear Kevin Owens because the only interesting thing about this I almost said a bad word about this stupid match and then uh, and then you'll never guess actually Ezekiel pinned him there was multiple interference but the the referee was was fine with it and then uh, Ezekiel got a cradle for the pin so then Ezekiel bails Kevin Owens wants a match with Ezekiel at uh, Hell in a Cell and whoop de doo Cody Rhodes promo where he uh, talked about Hell in a Cell. MVP versus Lashley. This match, my God. MVP has not wrestled in a long time, and he's coming off knee surgery. And uh, this is one of those matches where, you know, Jerry Lawler, they don't let Jerry Lawler do anything, but Jerry Lawler is wrestling, like, multiple matches every week on the indies. And, you know, you're thinking, well, man. And then, you know, like, Ric Flair's got his match, and everybody's worried about it. Dude, these guys went three minutes. And I don't think MVP did one move in this whole match. He did one running Yakuza kick in the corner. He did nothing in this match. And uh, finally, uh, they're outside. And Bobby Lashley and Omos start brawling. The referee's looking right at him on the outside. They're brawling outside the ring. This is not a DQ. Instead, the ref goes, eight. Nine! Teddy counts out Lashley as he's brawling with Omos, who is not in the match. So MVP wins. He gets to choose a stipulation. It will be a handicap match at Hell in a Cell. MVP and Omos against Lashley at Hell in a Cell. And then the announcers explain, well, you know, they were brawling, but the ref never saw Lashley hit Omos. He only saw Omos... Or no, it was the other way around. He never saw Omos hit Lashley. He only saw Lashley hit Omos. So it wasn't a DQ. It's like, well, that's fine, but why are you counting the guy out? Lacey Evans returns next week. Then the main event, Becky Lynch and Asuka. In real life, they got 11 minutes. But in your life, they got six. Because we had uh, a commercial break right in the middle of the match. It's like, they did the same thing they always do. Bianca does her entrance. There's literally 21 minutes left in the show, so they could have had like a really good match. But Bianca enters, and then they go to commercial. And then Asuka does her entrance, and then Becky has to do her entrance, and they finally start the match, and then they go immediately to commercial. And they come back, and there's six minutes left. And boom, 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 boom. They did the same finish I was just mocking a moment ago. Asuka tries to kick Becky. She kicks Bianca. Becky tries to throw Asuka into the table, but they screw up the spot, and Asuka just falls down. Becky jumps in the ring, and she wants Asuka to get counted out. Asuka makes it in the ring at the last second, but Becky doesn't even hit her with a move. Asuka rolls into the ring and then just lays there dead, and Becky pins her. That was a finish. So it is now a three-way at Hell in a Cell. And that was Raw. Back in a moment. Observer Live. I was chatting with the chat, and uh, WWE does a lot of dumb things, okay? But we don't need to invent dumb things, all right? Asuka's not being buried because she lost on Raw. What's happening is, this is the booking they do for every single three-way. Unless, unless it involves Roman Reigns, because he will never be pinned. But anybody else on the roster, if they're in a three-way, this is the exact booking that they do. Last week, Becky lost. This week, Asuka lost. Coming up on Monday, I bet you anything, Bianca's going to lose. This is their classic three-way booking. Everybody loses to everybody else. How many, time, how many years have I said this? We're going we're gonna to buy the pay-per-view to find out which of you is the most successful loser. Not like which one of you is the best. You're all losers. You're all going to lose. Becky lost. Like, you're all losing. So which one of you can can manage to get out with a w- one win? That's what you're paying for on pay-per-view. Now, could they have done the finish better? Well, of course. But you can say that about virtually every single match. It's like when people were going, oh, Cody's being buried. He can't win. He keeps winning by DQ. It's like, do you watch the show or do you just, like... Everybody loses via DQ all the time on every show. It's DQ, 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 count out, count out, distraction, 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 distraction. What you have to look at is it's not, well, you know, who's being pushed based on their win loss? Well, if you're looking at it that way, there's one person being pushed 
three, I guess, Roman Reigns and the Usos. That's it. No one else in the entire company is being pushed if you're going to go by a win-loss record. All right? And even the Usos have done uh, non-title jobs. So I guess we're down to only Roman Reigns. All right? So how do you determine who is a star if you can't go by win-loss? Well, you look at everybody as presented on television. And to, to try to claim that Cody is not being presented as a star, yeah, he had a match with The Miz with no heat. Okay, anything in the third hour is going to have no heat. You have a main event with Seth Rollins, and by that point in the show, it's going to have no heat. doesn't mean Seth isn't a star. So are they doing a countdown clock for Cody? Are they telling you every week win Cody? Of course. Right now, Cody is being pushed as the second biggest star in this company behind Roman Reigns. Now, if you watch the show and you're like, are you kidding? Yeah, no, I'm not kidding you. That's what's going on. Yeah, it sounds ridiculous when you think about it, but that's the way this company operates. And there's a lot of things to make fun of, but we don't have to invent things to make fun of. There's there's plenty, right? I can't believe people are this bent up about Cody Rhodes. I just I, I refuse well, to believe I'll tell you these why. people exist. And, and remember, I'm, we had the I'm prediction show to about Cody. To him. Remember, we had that yeah. prediction show about Cody. Yeah, it was actually funny because everybody had a prediction, but when they actually had to call in and give it, they didn't have the prediction they had like on the chats or whatever. But uh, everybody was sure that Cody was going to fail and he was going to be buried and he was going to be chasing the 24-7 title. That's all we heard before he came in. And I think people were mad at me because I said, dude, they're going to push this guy. They have to push this guy because they want to get MJFs and young and whoever else from AEW when their contracts come due, Jericho. They're, they're going to want to steal people from AEW. So it does them no good to bury Cody. You have to push Cody as a big... And, oh, no, they're not, Brian. He's going to chase that 24-7 title. Well, now that he's actually being pushed as a star, now we have to invent a narrative where he's getting buried. Well, I think but he's some, not. But, Brian, I think there's some long-term middle ground there where it's like, yeah, things are going to have to play out, and how will they feel about him a year from now, two years from now, three years from now? You know, I don't know how long his contract's for. Let's say it's for three years. We have seen them do stop starts with everybody, with the exception even even of Roman Reigns. But even Roman Reigns has been the one consistent that they've you know pushed people. But they've fallen out of favor with anybody. We talk about it with Kevin Owens as somebody you can rebuild. A Seth Rollins, you can rebuild very easily, bounce him back and forth. Who's to say they can't do that with Cody Rhodes? And who's to say that they won't do that with Cody Rhodes? And then. Are you as big of a success? Do you want, do people want to go over there? So yeah, like, you know, there's you again, multiple things can be right here. You're right. They have to push Cody Rhodes and I think they're doing it incredibly well. And I think the people that are complaining about that, if you're not being trolls, you're just being silly or stupid or blind about it. You know, I mean, completely obtuse. They are doing what they can with Cody Rhodes. He's not gotten any losses. They have a countdown clock for him. The whole entrance, it, you know, the, the top heels can't stand him. It works completely. So I, I don't, again, I think there's a lot of people being disingenuous about that. And if you are honestly missing it, I don't know what to tell you because they've done as good of a job with Cody Rhodes as they've done anybody being new in that company in the last, I don't know how many times. As far as your notes, talking about uh, repetitive booking, Cody has now wrestled Miz twice. That's one match more than he wrestled against his fierce foe MJF and two more than his matches with Kenny Omega, Adam Page, John Moxley, or CM Punk in AEW. Yeah. There's a lot of rematches in WWE. Uh, yeah, we that's... watch the same show over and over and over and over again. Yeah. And I need to actually go back and check the roster because, you know, there was a time where, you know, WWE clearly had a much bigger roster than AEW. And they still were doing the same matches over and over again. And somehow AEW almost never did rematches. But now I actually think that it's possible that AEW has a bigger roster because, man, they signed so many people. And uh, But it's the same deal. It's like, well, it doesn't matter how many people WWE has. Vince relies on the exact same people doing the exact same matches over and over again, week after week. Things are going to be changing now that... L.A. Knight's meat market is uh, on the scene. They're going to be breaking up not the monotony LA Knight. and everything. It's not L.A. Knight, bro. Is it Maxie Priest? What is it? Max Dupree! Max Dupree! No, no, Mike. Max Dupree! Max Dupree! Closer. You'll get Max, it. It's like, it's like I'm trying to get Howard Stern to say WNBC. Like, you had it. Max Dupree! No, Am I Max doing it correctly? Dupree! 
Max Dupree. That's better. Max Dupree. Is that what th- like that? Yeah. Max Dupree. That's a little bit better. All right. Mac- maximum model management. Along with his first model. Wait a second. 3M? Mace. I don't know if 3M is something they're going to be able to trademark. Well, they're not. They're going to trademark maximum male muscles. Maximum male model Whatever management. Whatever it is. Maximum Meat. model management. Maximum. I don't even know what it is. Mansoor, Mace. A lot of M's going on there with that group. You should listen to the uh, Filthy show yesterday where Filthy tries to argue that Max Dupree did not screw up and call him face. <laughs> Like from the Which 18th. he did. He did. He introduced him as face. <laughs> but WWE edited off everything. And, and on well, WWE.com. Yeah, she's a great name for a male model. Would it not be calling him face? Don't even get into this again. Well, we're going to have face and biceps and sure thighs. Lats. Hey, get in here. coming down to the ring. Glutes. <laughs> look, I mean, on that, look. On that roster, somebody could come up as glutes, somebody from NXT. Actually, I picture glutes working with two dimes and stacks. Stacks, two dimes, and glutes. <laughs> glutes glutes can actually crush two dimes. Because he's, uh, he's really does those squats and everything. Those kettlebells. First 15 minutes of Raw were fabulous. Such a non-WWE promo. Riddle's delivery and emotions were spot on. Dude, Riddle was oh my fantastic. God. I'm sorry. I, I Dude, don't he know. was great. I, he was he awesome. It was, was a little, I don't know. Oh, little... man. Now you're going to, anything else you want to bury? No, I'm not burying it. I'm just saying, I'm, uh, people in Surprise are extra sensitive about Riddle being sensitive there. I, I did that for no Andy. I saw the about... I saw the thing afterwards too, the digital exclusive that he did where they continued on with it as well. And I mean, he did. Hey, I look. I it, I'm not saying that there's not worse things on that show. I just I was surprised that people really loved it as much as they did. God bless you everybody. I like this guy. He's got an idea from one of the wrestlers in Maximum Muscular whatever. Mm-hmm. Sir Loin. I like that one. <laughs> uh, he's, he's, the he's, problem he's is, it's too good. <laughs> well, of course. Oh my God, that's how you can break away Otis for shakes and weights and bring back that version of him. You know, he could be. He could be. He's a new recruit somehow to male model management, and he's the the comic relief there. Sir Loins. Sir Loin. No, this guy says Sir Loins. Ah, which I'm not sure if that's better or or worse. The phone lines are open, by the way, if you're bored. Eight four four nine one three twenty seven twenty seven. Do you Otherwise, bring in Mr. I'll just Pectacular? do these, these text messages. I don't know who they're going to bring in for MMM. <laughs> this person here says, "Hear me out. We need bad shows like NXT and other WWE programming. <laughs> when you and Vinny review AEW, which most times is an awesome show, the reviews go pretty quickly as you talk about the good stuff. When you review NXT, those reviews take longer because there's so much horrible stuff to talk about. If all of wrestling was just great, I don't think we would have. That's true. I would miss. You know, there's always got to be. I've always got to have some rival." It's got to be balanced in this world. It was world. WCW it for a while, yeah. and then it was uh, TNA, and I never thought it would be WWE, but here we are. Well, plus some people are just into schadenfreude, too, and they take great pleasure out of watching Vinny in great pain having to view these shows. Which, by the way, how long did the interview portion of the uh, Edge and all that, how long did that go for? The match went about 11 and a half minutes. How long did the interview segment go for? We're talking about the Edge thing? Yeah. I told you. They stood in the ring for eight minutes, and then they talked mm-hmm. for eight minutes. They were out there for 16, 16. minutes. 16. So with the match itself, so nearly 12 minutes, 28 minutes spent on that. If you watch the video recap, which is all you would need to see from it, it's two minutes and 19 seconds, I believe, on WWE.com. And you get a little of the promo. You get the end of the match, which is all you need and tells you a lot about that show. Please review uh, Brian and Vinny reviews on Noah with Russo esque that does Nozawa. Oh God! Are you now you're going to become the uh, you, the the Nozawa wrestling expert now? I never said anything about that. That's what oh, that I'm person wrote there. But I didn't hear a lot about Nozawa yesterday. One good. 
No, no, people don't like him. No. They don't. This person here says, do I have to read one about, should I skip the Sasha and Naomi one? Yes. Is that for the best? Yes. All right. Any chance Hell in a Cell will be better than WrestleMania Backlash? My expectations for Backlash were low, but it turned out to be a good show. Any chance Hell in a Cell will be better? Well, I mean, it, there's always a chance. I mean, listen, the wrestlers are, are all, for the most part, good. So, I mean, if you've got, let's look at this Hell in a Cell card here. I think we got four official matches, but mm. uh, I mean, Cody and Seth and Hell in a Cell, I mean, you know that's going to be good. And Bianca, Oscar, and Becky, that's going to be really good. Ezekiel and Kevin Owens, I mean, we'll see. Kevin Owens is really good. And lastly, Omos and MVP, I mean, it'll suck. So, uh, yeah, I'm, that's, only, that's all we got so far. You know who's really good? I mean, Veer and Mysterios. El, El, El Pantasmo is pretty damn good. Of course he's good. I could have told you that. He had a match with Teton and another match with uh, Wheeler Yuta during the best of the Super Juniors. Excellent. The outliers, two of the, the outlier wrestling matches. There hasn't been too much bad. That, that's been for Sho Tanaka and uh, Raisuke Taguchi. They've been having the bad stuff. But Desperado and Teton was a great one. Hiromu and Akira, it's another Francesco Akira, another really good one. And, and TJP against Desperado and Lindemann, both fantastic as well, too. But not as fantastic as these Old Bay Goldfish Crackers. Have you seen these? Do they have these on the West Coast? Do they have these in the Pacific Northwest? These things are fantastic. Not good for your sodium count, but it doesn't matter. No calls, everybody. Mike's going to be plugging goldfish. For free, I might add. Dom, I don't even know where to start. Back in a moment, Observer Live. We're here. Wrestling Observer Live. Except for what is this person... Man, we were talking about uh, on the Filthy Tom show yesterday. I was mentioning that, man, if I were feeling it, I'd I'd come out of retirement and go after Tom's Black Label Pro Midwest Championship or whatever he had. Yeah, and I said I, I could be the king of the the you know the regional titles as a former Texarkana Television champion. This guy here says. Clearly, Brian has a case of regional championship envy, needing to downplay Tom's title, representing around 12 states and 70 million people, including several major metropolitan areas, by putting it on equal footing with a belt representing portions of three states and roughly 150,000 people. Yeah. Bro, what are these states is Texas! Yeah, well, what are you talking about? It's the no, biggest no. state! Wrong. Except it's for not, Alaska. It's not all of Texas. You only get, like, the panhandle portion. No, you only get, get like, out of here. Yes, it represents you do. that whole area. You don't know. You know, You haven't broken into to Blanchard territory down in the southwest into the funks and the Amarillos. You couldn't, you couldn't handle it out that far. We don't even know what the Midwest technically even covers. What is the Midwest? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a vague term for a vague area. Will you stop? You're a really. Uh, a I didn't put it on equal footing friend. anyway. I just said that as a former Texarkana champion, it would only be fitting that I would become a Midwest yeah. champion as well. Yeah, you should come out of retirement and do that so we can see you get choked out. He wouldn't choke me out anymore. Come up you and idiots. say you deserve Get out of here. I'm retired. Lazy old man. We're out of time, but we got more coming up tonight. The. Uh... Oh, get out of here. I'm not bad at math or geography. I hate you guys. I'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.